I'm not really going to cover much. Most of it's going to be about the street lighting. And um, the gully pit is just a snippet we worked on and takes advantage of some of the, the 12D um, modifier for uh, applying attributes as well. So if we start with the street lighting. So we apply the standard drawings, the street lighting standard drawings. Contributes to a more complete design. Contributes to our developing BIM strategy. Nice and scary that's going to be. Contributes to the reduction and elimination of design clashes because you can actually see the 3D objects and work with them in clash detection. Contributes to the... Um, gathers all the street lighting design data into a single file. At the moment, it's a, an open XML file with a defined schema, making it portable and able to be mined to provide data to other systems. And it produces the required outputs. So it also does the electrical calcs. Most of us in the room won't be interested in that, but um, it's, that's what it's able to do for us. So if we look at this project here, we'll just get up the panel. So that's the macro panel. Just gathers a bit of information that the macro needs to work inside 12D, the tin you're going to apply the street lights to, the view you want, and we've got a highlighting color. You'll see that in a minute and what that does. Now I've allowed it to be changed because I was fixing colors at one stage and quite frankly, some colors look awful. So it allows you to pick it if you don't really like what's default. So we'll start up the main panel. And I've got a street lighting I've done before. Okay. So it's a tree on the left, starting with a point of supply. And we've got a, a pit object. We've got a switchboard and all the structure that is in there with pits and mounts. And on the right-hand side, you see details about each of those objects, and you can change settings. So if we look at a mount, for instance, we can see we've got an outreach. We've got an outreach length. So I could set that one to four and a half instead. Maybe I want a new outreach on that, so it's a double outreach arm. Maybe I want to get rid of that now, and I'll actually say that instead of a a regular, it might be a high mount. So at the moment we're using things like the perfect light codes that operate within our perfect light system. You can see that that's automatically updated the, the light information, pulled out the flux value and all that sort of thing that you need in there. If I can then add another outreach to that, and you'll see it's adopted the current settings. Don't worry about so much the four and a half meter outreach, but you can see that it's got the um, it's got 180 degrees to the previous outreach. I could add another one, so that's three high mast outreaches, and then I could model that. So if I model that, uh, yeah, I'll save it. does go topmost. The main time is taken in the, the actual ducting calculation because it has to actually drape all the strings onto a tin and then calculate where the ducts sit. So you can see that high mast in there, in there now with three. And of course scrolling with this mouse is a bit painful but in the plan view you've got your plan symbol And I'll just reset that back to the back to the view I want. And we've also got the the ducting underneath it. And I was having too much fun and I've actually modeled the the ducting runs themselves and the trenching and the and the backfill. So when you get these toys you might as well play with them. 
And you can see the highlighting arrow we've got there. So we've got that highlighting arrow that shows you the position you're in. There's a couple of things in there around. Just got to get my window back. Around finding things. So say I, I look at look at this mount here, and I want to go. Well, where is that? If I right click and find, I can find from 12D object. Pick that and it'll take me to that position in the tree, so I'm not having to know exactly where everything is all the time. Another thing we've done is we can do the Lux contours. I'll just do this pretty quickly. I can pick, pick that. Should be adding them. What was that telling me? Oh, I did my macro fall over. That'd be right. work. <laughs> so the, that, that's done the contours there. Um, that's, to, that's to all the calcs that Perfect Light would do. I've done the comparison against Perfect Light and what's the other one? Uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but and that, that's the same. They match up. The other thing we've got is the actual, some of the electrical outputs. So we can get a schematic with calcs. Which I think I've broken somewhere there, but that should have a bit more in it. So I've probably upset the structure of this. But uh, it'll give you all those values. Not being an electrical person, it's quite easy for me to break that data. <laughs> Sudar's the one who gives me the guidance on that one. Uh, we can get out some cable schedules. Again, it won't be complete because I've broken the structure of the tree. Yeah, so it's got the positions, the pits, the mounts. Uh, we can get up a calcs, a detailed calc report. sorts of values in it. Again, mostly meaningless to me. I'd like to keep it that way, quite frankly. <laughs> if you've done a perfect light uh, root lighting run to work out your luminaire spacing, you can actually use that information to place the luminaires. So you pick an alignment string, you pick a, an edge string, whether it's left or right. You've got your tariff defined, your luminaire type that you want to apply. Whether it's on the right, staggered or opposite, right, left, staggered or opposite, what the mounting height, all those values that you need in there, along with the luminaire spacing at a starting chainage, end chainage, and the interval for it. And it'll actually place them along those strings for you just to save you the time of manually placing them. And I suppose the main thing that you get out of it is some volumes if you really want to because all those, tri those are tri-meshes. So uh, the trenching is actually not because it's open-ended at the moment. But you get that visualisation through no extra effort. You're just saying, I want to place this here and create one of those in that tree. And when you model it, it's doing all that 3D for you, saving you all that time. 
So that's the that's street lighting in a very rough nutshell. Is that unique to Queensland, or is it sort of in terms of the <coughs> in terms of oh, probably at the moment? I wouldn't say I know anything about the standards of other states. So it's all about our standard drawings because that standard drawings for us are the, the easy things to get hold of. Uh, I look at things like the gateway bridge and the street lighting masks that are used on that and I shudder. I think I'm not sure how I'll model that. Okay, so that's the result of our gully pit snippet. And yes, you can even turn off the grate. And have a good look inside. So if I was to turn on the drainage. And you can see that um, pipe going into the pit and you can, and that's pretty configurable. So again, it's our standard drawing. You've got the layer of the curb and channel that you want to remove from where the gully pit's going to go. Uh, that is our standard layer, or the layer I've set up in our snippets for that. The instance of the curb snippet, because we do use an instance number against our curb snippet. We've got the layer that you want the, the, to connect the gully to. Typically in, in this I've used an edge of shoulder string, so we've got a snippet that goes out to the edge of shoulder, we've got another snippet that creates the curb and channel profile hanging off that shoulder, and then we're using that shoulder because that shoulder stays fairly continuous through. And I use that shoulder string to add other attributes to it as other information. And that's the string I'm going to hang it from. We've got the three different types of gully. There's the on-grade flow to left, flow to right, and sag. Got the lintel length or the lintel size in small, medium, large. We've got a depth, the invert, so it's from the curb lip to the invert of the gully. And whether it's on the right hand side of the connecting string or the left hand side. So that allows you, if you've say got a single alignment with dual carriageway at each side of that and curb and channel on the left of it hand and right hand of each carriageway, you can place that to because the side of that string, reference string is important. And then you've got the curb profile that's being, that the gully is being injected into, whether you want to create the 3D tri-meshes, because early on you may not want all that 3D detail, you just want a 2D, just a top-down view of where the gully's sitting. And in this case, I've said that I want the subsurface strings created. That was, I mostly put that in for my own bug checking, but I, it's left in there. So if we look at if we look at that, get uh, bottom strings. So those green strings represent all the strings that go into making up that gully pit. And took some time getting there, and I'm glad it's now a snippet. So that's, that's that, and there's the curb, curb in line and the uh, lip in line versions are in there as, uh, as separate snippets. All right, so then, how do those two fit into our BIM developments? Again, it's about modeling information. So various opinions about what BIM is and Mine, it's all about the middle letter. It's all about information. If you don't have information, you don't have a model. If you don't have information, you've got nothing to build. 
So we're working on tools that try and get information into the model. So we've had the, in the last conference I showed the snippets that we had for version 11. Again, they're pushing information in. Now with the attribute link and attribute shape modifiers that are in 12, we'll be able to push attributes onto those, into the outputs from those snippets. We'll get other attributes put in on other, uh, into other macro content. So as the street lighting will put out attributes into the objects, the gully pit puts out attributes onto the objects. So if I go back to the So that gully pit, that great shape, or tri mesh, is carrying these attributes. So there's a concrete grade, comes off the standard drawing, easy to get hold of. Reinforcing mesh, whether it's required or not, it's easy to get off the standard drawing and is applied through the snippet. We've got the standard drawing, is the, that's the standard drawing number. And I want to get a hyperlink put in there. That would be nice. So that then you just click on that and it go, takes you to the standard drawing on our website. So that's the sort of stuff we're looking at in terms of that. So then we looked at, well, what can that all go out to? And at the moment, it's looking like IFCs are a, a, a thing we're going to choose to have. And we, we've got then, so that job there is now dumped out to an IFC. And you can see all the all the 3D content of it. That gully pit has information on it. There's a 12D model tab here, which has got, again, it's got the concrete grade, it's got the reinforcing is not required. So it's all information someone who's not 12D literate might want out of a model that they can access just through clicking on that object. They can click on that grate and they can see that it's actually it's at chainage 5300, it's got an offset, it's got a lintel length of 4.8, it's a large type, it's at that coordinate, so this is the set out point that's on our standard drawing for a gully pit, and it's got an offset from the alignment of 5 metres, and all that information is put in there. The lintel has a piece of information about its length. We've got the street light at the moment, the only thing I'm putting on is on the luminaire, but it tells you that it's got a certain luminaire code with a certain other values, and we'll just improve on those as we go. Uh, so we're trying to get more and more into it so that that sort of output has got more and more useful information for someone who's trying to manage a, a, in a BIM environment. And that's pretty much where I'm at.